welcome to uh, our conversation. I'm delighted to uh, to have you here with us to have a conversation about a topic that I feel is is really very very relevant, um, especially at the time that we are facing now, which is um, everything related to talent, people. And I'm really very much looking forward to having this um, this chat with you and learning from your experience. So welcome, forward. Thank you very much, Farida. Happy to be here. So maybe we can start off with uh, understanding a little bit more about you and your organization. Okay, so um, I represent, I'm the CEO of Awab Holdings. Uh, Awab Holdings is a family business uh, established uh, back in the 70s uh, by my father. Uh, Awab Holdings, um, as I mentioned, is a family business. So our main goal is to maximize uh, the family's uh, uh, wealth. Now, uh, with that being said, uh, wealth is not always measured in uh, the amounts of dollars uh, one has. Uh, we do uh, look at uh, many uh, angles uh, when we talk about wealth of the family, and that is uh, in the sense of the employees that we uh, have uh, are considered part of the family, the uh, society that we uh, function in and work uh, in is also part of our uh, value system and family. Uh, and of course, the shareholders. Absolutely. And uh, can you tell us a little bit in which sectors you're you're active at the moment? Uh, Awab has uh, uh, multiple subsidiaries uh, in the uh, real estate sector. Uh, we're passive in the uh, more in the real estate investment sectors in terms of uh, equity markets and all that. We have other people managing our portfolios, uh, and we're active in the healthcare industry. The uh, distance learning and training uh, industry, uh, in the automotive industry, and generally in the IT industry. So looking at what we are going through at the moment, uh, we are currently in, I would say, roughly said for our region, probably month three of the pandemic. Um, I think uh, perhaps the most urgent emergency measures have been taken by most companies. Um, I think now many people are looking at, uh, you know, purely business continuity and then also kind of the midterm um, perspective of, of the organization. And, and one topic that I wanted to particularly highlight with you is the question of, of very broadly said people. So, of course, as a leader, when you navigate a situation like this, um, you need to be extremely aware of, and as you said, you consider your staff as part of the family, um, which I think is a, is, a, is a great trait in a family business, but it also comes with added responsibility. So, could you describe to us a little bit how you address kind of perhaps the emer- first the emergency situation, and then maybe we can, we can move on to, you know, your, your other perspectives. Now, when, when we were first hit by COVID-19, I believe people had two types of um, reactions. Uh, one was, this is just a temporary thing. It's going to pass and I, you know, give it a couple of weeks and everything will be fine. Uh, another were more, uh, for, you know, for lack of a better uh, uh, word, uh, riding the wave and say, and they use that as an excuse to to take some harsh decisions that they they weren't able to take before. Yes. Uh, um, uh, so there are two types. Now, the reality of the matter is it's a problem. And you, in every business, regardless of how cash-rich you are, how you need to, uh, you know, uh, address it as mm-hmm. a, a problem or a challenge. I, I like to use the word challenge you know, more than a problem. Now, as we know, each challenge could have, could have negative effects or positive effects. Of course. Um, so it's not a matter of how much money I have, how, what, my, what my EBIT is, and, and how, how, you know, how did it affect my sales. It's more about how am I going to really deal with the situation uh, in a way that is beneficial uh, uh, for me, my company, my product, uh, and such. And, and, be, and for something to be beneficial, it doesn't always have to be profitable. Uh, right. Sometimes uh, beneficial is just, you know, not hurting me as much if I didn't do anything. Uh, so it's very important to, to first really address that we are living in a time that will require change. Mm-hmm. And that change will be uh, uh, seen negative by some people, mm-hmm. will be harsh on some people. 
But the bottom line is I look at the big picture. I look at a company as a ship and, and sometimes you can't save everyone on the ship and you need to take those hard decisions. And I'm a firm believer that any hard decisions should be taken on yourself first before you uh, uh, um, you know, move them forward too. And it's also relative. I mean, if you um, decrease a CEO's uh, salary by 10%, it could not have the same effect as if you de- if it was a, a, a lower uh, uh, paying uh, job, 10% could hurt much more. So uh, that was also something that we, you know, you have to, you have to consider. But bottom line is you need to take action, mm-hmm. delay the action, is not gonna uh, 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 help neither you, neither the ones you are trying to protect uh, uh, by this delay, uh, mm-hmm. nor the uh, uh, overall uh, uh, company. And and by that, and, and I'm not gonna beat around the bush uh, uh, a lot here, that taking action means uh, 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 you have to let people go. Mm-hmm. You have to uh, uh, decrease salaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, luxuries or uh, what the business world likes to call slack in the system that you have to sure. uh, uh, address. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's a positive uh, uh, view sure. of things. I would start with the slack. I would start mm-hmm. with the free coffee. I would start with the uh, the things that I'd rather do rather than fire someone. Of course. But at the same time, slack is not always about money. Uh, there are people in, in your organization that are really not paying uh, uh, there's no return on, on their investment mm-hmm. and and this pandemic will give you the right uh, uh, lenses to to actually see them uh, now what you do about them is obviously a relative they could Up be to, a, yeah. a very old employee who you know served with your father and you know but you need to address that you need to know no, I know that this guy or you know this employee he or she is not returning but sure. I know that and I'm keeping them for other reasons that's better than not knowing and thinking that they are productive Absolutely. and and in the end you end up uh, losing yeah. money uh, because of that so that's what I what I like about this pandemic is that it highlighted our weaknesses right and it everybody in our company knows that what we're doing is justified. Right. Uh, um, uh, so the, the, the reaction that we received was not, it was very, very uh, accepting. Uh, a lot of people are willing to work harder uh, uh, and, and all of us are working much harder and we're being positive. We're trying as much as we can to be positive. And looking at a little bit the future perspective now, so obviously you are a um, leader who has had the emergency situation, has righted the ship. Um, And now, of course, as you say, you you are a multi-generational family business, which means you look probably at your business as a generational legacy, which you would like to hand over to the next generation. So that means it gives you a very large perspective of what is going on right now. As we are firefighting, we are also talking about legacy, which is kind of the interesting part of family business. What I'm very curious about is you have a very interesting um, perspective on actually talent and how how this will affect your ability, let's say in the near to mid future, to actually attract new talent. Could you expand a little bit on that? Absolutely. And now, one more dynamic that we have as a family business is that it is a business. We need to run it as a business in the end. It has to grow or it will fall. So regardless if it's family or not. Two, it's a legacy for in our case. So that could, so we really care about the name. Mm-hmm. Three, it is a source of income for family members. So that really makes it much more harder on whoever is in the leadership position of the family business uh, uh, to, to keep it running. Um, so uh, so it's not only is it it's your name, it's a business, it's also where your children, uh, nephews, nieces uh, will eventually uh, look look at as a source of uh, employment. Uh, now, some family businesses do not take that approach and they don't employ, but in our case, it is a uh, looked at as a source of employment. So it, it, it has to it has to last. It's not a, we don't have another option. Now, the long term perspective, and again, it's counterintuitive. Uh, it is a, a, a oxymoron of, of sorts where we're saying 
we started this conversation saying it's, it's an emergency, you have to cut costs, and you have to let people go. But at the same time, it's the perfect time to hire. It's the right time to hire. It's, it's the time you can see it from two views. Internally, you know exactly where your weaknesses are. And you know who to hire and what kind of people you need to hire uh, because of this you know, uh, emergency that, you've, that you're going through. Two, this emergency is global. It's not just you. Yep. So everyone else is doing the same thing. A lot of talent are leaving uh, mm -hmm. uh, their their work uh, their workplace, and companies are in different levels. So, a what could be not good enough for Unilever could be very very good for me. And like I would dream of getting someone at that mm -hmm. level. So, mm -hmm. uh, you have to keep an open mind and and uh, uh, and search for that. And and there is a a story uh, uh, of. Hewlett and Packard uh, from HP at uh, when the uh, Second World War uh, uh, ended, uh, a lot of the engineering talents were uh, uh, almost exclusively uh, uh, hired by the army. Uh, and once the world, uh, once the World War uh, World War Two ended, uh, a lot of them were being let go, and there was a recession at the same time uh, in the American economy. So. Uh, uh, they decided, uh, Hewlett, and, uh, Hewlett and Packard decided to hire uh, during that uh, period. And it's a very famous uh, quote uh, when, when one asks them, uh, how do you afford hiring uh, during this, uh, this you know, recession? Mm -hmm. uh, their reply was, I'm not sure which one of them replied, but their reply was, how can we afford not to? Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is really uh, uh, how can we afford not to hire? Uh, to, you've had talent who have been invested in, mm -hmm. trained, and you are lucky that they are looking for a job. So do whatever you need, but get them, uh, mm -hmm. build on them, and you would know. You would see that once this pandemic is over, this new world that we're going to be in, you will be much better equipped to to take over uh, a much bigger market share. So. Take that to your advantage, uh, uh, prepare and be ready, because once this uh, pandemic is over, there will be a huge shift in the players, and, and we really hope we are among, we're among the top performers.